The Game Boy, originally released in 1989 by Nintendo, this handheld gaming device quickly became an iconic symbol of pop culture. Including its iterations like the Game Boy Color and Advance, these consoles paved the way for portable gaming as a whole, and clearly left a huge impact on a ton of childhoods, including my own. So, to pay homage to this legendary set of consoles, I decided to create a game for it. Usually for my projects, I tend to come up with an idea after I decide the format of it, but I actually had an idea in mind already, so let me just show you it. This is Boba Boxer, a game I created for a university course that was all about prototyping games. I never ended up releasing it publicly as it was just made for schoolwork, but I decided that making it into a Game Boy game would be the perfect opportunity to do so. Especially since this game only used a few colors, I thought it would translate over into a Game Boy game quite well. The main gameplay here was also quite simple. It was a basic platformer, with the main gimmick being tied to a punch that you'd use to defeat enemies. If you were to get hit, you'd instantly respawn, allowing the game to feel very fast-paced. The main goal here is just to reach the end of each of the three levels, and once you do so, you make it to work, and there's this little celebratory animation. So with this outline, let's jump right into actually making the game. So firstly, an introduction to the main tool I use for the project being GB Studio. GB Studio is an insanely cool application that allows you to make Game Boy games easily. It offers a wide range of built-in genres such as top-down 2D, platformer, and shoot-'em-up, providing you with ready-to-use engines specific to each genre. This feature allows you to work within these predefined engines without the need for extensive coding. Its programming system is also very intuitive and easy to pick up, as you can simply click to add events and change up parameters without really writing any code. So, if you don't actually have any programming experience, I'm sure you could still figure out how it works. Anyways, so the first step for the game was to translate over the sprites of the player from the original game into GB Studio. To do so, I first opened up the original file with all of the frames. Then, I basically had to replace each color with the one from the GB Studio palette. The lime green that surrounds the sprites here specifically means it will show up as transparent over in GB Studio. Then, I had to turn these images into a sprite sheet, as this is how GB Studio reads in images. So with this, I went over to GB Studio and began piecing together the different animations. In this case, I made sure it was a platformer player, which allowed some default states to be defined like an idle, moving, and jumping animation. After this, I went ahead and made two more fixed direction states for punching left and right. Then, to get punching to work, I made an if statement that detects if you are facing left or right, and you press the B button. If so, it would play the corresponding punching animation and set a variable known as is punching to be true. And here's what that looks like in action. It was actually crazy how easy this was to set up as GB Studio basically handled all of the main platformer engine mechanics. And on top of that, if you head into settings, you could actually tinker with every parameter of the engine easily, which is quite awesome. Next up, I spent some time actually mocking up every other element for the game I had planned into one image, including platforms and enemies. In this case, the original game had two enemies being these sentient tapioca balls and these cannons. The art here didn't look too good in my opinion, so after a bit of time, here's what the updated mockup looked like. Besides platforms and enemies, I also spreaded a spike trap in case I wanted to use it, alongside some basic particles and a drink for you to collect. Back over in GB Studio, I decided to next work on getting the enemies to work, which was quite simple. Firstly, I imported the enemy sprite in, and then I made a simple hard-coded movement script that detects if the enemy is at one of two coordinate points. If so, it would flip around and head towards the other point. Plus, I made a simple collision checker that detected if it touched the player, and is punching is set to true. If so, the screen would shake and the enemy would disappear. After adding in a basic enemy, I decided to tinker a bit with the color mode option within GB Studio, and it was really easy to use. You can either utilize some built-in palettes or make your own by choosing four colors to work with. After this, you can head on over to the sprites menu and apply these palettes directly to the sprite. So with a bit of tinkering, this is now what the game looked like. You could easily toggle color on and off, which is what I tended to do quite a bit throughout development as well, because I like both the classic Game Boy look and the more modernized color version as well. Next up, I decided to work on creating the cannons, which was also really quite simple. I basically made a script that checked to see if the player was within a certain radius of the cannon, which you can see here is indicated by the red circle around it. If so, a timer would activate and wait a few seconds before firing a cannonball in its direction. After this, I made a cannon that faces in the opposite direction just by flipping some values around, and I made it so that when you go to punch an enemy, some particles spurt out, similar to the original game. 
I also took the time to go ahead and add the drink to the game, giving it a little floating animation and made it so when you collect it, some particles will appear. Next up, I had to work out what was probably the most time-consuming thing here, being the actual levels themselves. The original project had three levels, and I wanted to carry these over and touch them up into more complete levels. So what I did here was basically open up a sprite and create a screen template. What I mean by this is basically blocking out what a Game Boy screen would see, as the screen resolution of a Game Boy is just 160 pixels by 144. So keeping this in mind, I basically mapped everything out onto a grid in a sprite, making the level just one massive image. And here is the finished level compared to the original one. Anyways, back over in GB Studio, I had to work on getting collisions to work with the map, as right now, it was just a static image and you would just fall through it. The way collisions work for maps in GB Studio is really easy to understand. Basically, you could click a button and be entered into a collision painting mode. Here, you could go ahead and basically paint in what tiles should be solid. You could also choose different types of collisions, such as only top, which would allow you to make jump through platforms. This took a bit of time to do, but it wasn't anything difficult. After this, I decided to add a bit more color to the level. To do so, I opened up the paint tool, and similar to before, I started coloring in certain tiles I wanted to look differently. I went with a blue-green aesthetic here, like the original game, and making the foreground a lighter green with the background being more bluish is something that I thought looked quite pleasing. After painting in the map, I went ahead and added some triggers into it. In GB Studio, triggers are pretty self-explanatory and act as collision zones that, when entered, will cause an event to happen. In this case, there were triggers at the ladder and inside the pits that you fall into. When touching these triggers, you'll be warped back to the start of the level, and for the ladder, you'd be sent to the next one. Overall, it's really easy to set up and understand how these work. After this was completed, I basically filled in the level with enemies by copying and pasting them and changing up the coordinates within their scripts. And with the enemies added, here's what the completed level looked like. It was already starting to come together before, but now that I had a full level created, it was really quite satisfying to see it all work coherently. Before working on the next level, I wanted to get sound to work in this one. And once again, it was quite easy to do so. Firstly, I searched up some assets to use since the Game Boy uses a unique sound format. I was able to find two packs to use. One is the GB Studio Community Assets Pack on GitHub, and the other is a sound effects bundle by CoffeeBat on itch.io. I spent some time looking through there, and I found some awesome music and sounds to use in the game. So with that, here's what the game sounds like. Next, I basically had to work on the other two levels, which did take a while, but it was quite literally the same process of translating over the old levels into a sprite and sort of remastering them, drawing a collision map for all the platforms, painting the map with the right colors, and adding in enemies and triggers. So, with all three levels made, I still had to work on a few more things to make this game complete. First up, I had to create the victory screen, which in the original is just this. So, back over in A-Sprite, I basically condensed the original screen to fit the Game Boy resolution, and in GB Studio, I made it so that once you touch the ladder in the final level, you'd be transported here, and a little celebratory jingle would play. Then after this, I worked on the title screen, which was really easy. I simply recreated the original title screen on a smaller scale, and made it play a catchy tune. The final aspect of the game that I had to go ahead and add here was a little splash screen. So I made one just mentioning my name, and after a few seconds, you'd be brought on over to the title screen. And with all those screens made, the game was complete. Each screen linked to another one and made it a full game loop, meaning now it was fully playable. So now comes probably my most anticipated part of this project, getting it to run on actual hardware. As it's one thing to get it running on a PC, but now it was time to see it actually running on a Game Boy. So, I loaded the ROM up onto a flash cart and chucked it on in. And here's how it looks. So yeah, it was perfectly fine running on an actual Game Boy Color and I was really happy with how this looked. Plus, with the clunkiness of the buttons, it felt super satisfying to play. However, as you can probably tell, it was quite hard to see since I was recording from above, and the screen is not backlit. So with that said, here it is running on my Game Boy Advance SP, my first handheld I ever had.
I gotta say, it still feels a bit surreal to be able to play a game I made on something that had such a massive impact on my childhood, and the game itself was quite fun, and arguably way better than the original one that I just made for school. It was a bit hard to play and record at the same time, but trust me, everything here works perfectly. And if you want to play this game for yourselves, there is of course a link down below to my itch.io page where you can play it in your browser, or you can download the ROM yourself. Alongside this, if you're on a mobile device, here's what that looks like. You'll get access to a gamepad backed exactly like a Game Boy. It's really cool how GB Studio has this feature built in, allowing for a really smooth experience no matter what device you're on. So go and check it out if you want. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more game development projects like this one. And as always, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.